Hey, it's Jeremy here, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this cool adventure logo type illustration look that you can use for social media or for your portfolio. So to get some ideas before I started creating my adventure logo, I went on Pinterest. You can see I have uh, just a normal board here. I typed in adventure, and you can see we get some ideas here. It's very landscapey, open spaces, camping, very rustic, and you get a whole wide of images here. And it really helps me to just get a picture for what I can use. So you can see you've got a compass, we've got boats, we've got some jeeps, swings, pyramids. You can really just pick any object and just put it down into simple form, so a simple shape. So you can see a car here, that'll be a nice silhouette there. And you can really use anything. You know, just make a Pinterest board, get a few images, you know, just save it. And this will really help you get a picture on what type of object you can add into your logo design so it's good to create um, and have an image of a simple shape where you can put typography within it and that's what I picked um, and yeah so just do this and you'll find some nice inspiration another thing I do as well is I typed in rustic color schemes just to play around with some colors and you can see here that if you click on one of these images you can go and zoom in there and you'll see you'll get all these colors and what you can do is just right click save image or copy image and then just go back to illustrator and just dump it in there and then get your eyedropper and you'll be able to get those colors ready and add them as a swatch and but once you've done that then you can start playing around with those colors and have palettes so this is one of the ways i use to get some cool colors and it's good to do it beforehand so you're ready um, to add them in your design or illustration so once you've done with your sketch what you want to go do is locate it on your computer um, scan it in or just take a photo of it and just get it on your computer and then once you've done that just gonna click it and drag it into Illustrator and you can see I've got my sketch here and which one I've picked is this Zeppelin here that I'm gonna use and what I want to do is gonna make sure in my layers panel it's on its own layer so to open the layers panel you can go to window and go to layers in the middle there you can see that and you want to rename the layer to sketch or whatever you like I'm just going to select it and then holding shift and dragging that to make it bigger. So I wanted to cover my artboard. The artboard is just 20, 1080p normal sizing. Uh, it doesn't really matter what size it is. And then what I'm going to do is select the image there and just drop the opacity a little bit. Maybe 70% just so we can make it lighter so we can trace on top. And then what I'm going to do, go to your layers panel. If you, if you click next to the eyeball, you can get this lock and that's going to lock the layer. Now what I'm going to do is in your layers panel, you can see where my mouse is, just click this little paper there and we can make a new layer. What I'm going to do this is now I'm going to call this Design Trace. And what we're going to do now, we can start working on top of our sketch here. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to start, you know, building out these shapes using the shape tool and the pen tool. I'm going to get this oval shape here for the balloon. So I'm going to press start with P. I want to start from the far end because to get nice smooth curves, you want to make sure that the there's less anchor points and you're going to use the handles there so you can see there I'm dragging that out now I'm just going to change the color so you guys can see um, I'll get my stroke panel up here and just bump up the stroke there and then once again press P and then click back on to the last um, anchor point there and I'm just going to hold alt just to drag that handle out and then so we can start going again Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know it's good to get some nice curves there. And you can hold shift to actually keep restrain the proportions as well. Cool, so you can see that. And uh, this is a little a bit wonky, so you can always go back and edit. So you can starting to see this balloon shape taking action. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use shapes here as well. So I'm going to use some oval shapes here. And you can see that we don't want it to overlap. So what we can do is select both the shapes and then press Shift M for the Shape Builder tool. And then you can see that it's recognizing these as shapes. And what we can do is hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. And what it does is it's going to minus this shape. So I can just click and drag. And it's going to minus and leave us with this shape here. So that's a fast way just to create those shapes. Then I'll do it again. So I'm just selecting 
the ellipse tool from the left here, holding Option or Alt, and then just dragging that, placing it, and then selecting the objects I want, and then use the Shape Editor tool and minus it off. And then for these ones here, we can use a rectangle or we can just use a stroke. I'm going to use a stroke. So I'm going to press P for the pen tool and then I'm going to click, left click, left click like that. So these are all separate strokes now. As you can see there, I'm, I'm going to move that up. Just make it more even. So we've got that front of the balloon. And then now we're going to work on this fin at the back or the rudder whatever you call it I'm gonna go to my shape tools on the left here and then we're gonna go to the star tool so what we can do now is left click and drag out the star and press the up and down arrow keys and you can actually create more sides to it so I'm gonna make just one a one-sided triangle from that I'm gonna rotate it and then you can see what I'm gonna do here I'm going to select this the box, the bounding box, and I'm going to drag holding alt like that. So now we can get that wide triangle there. So you can see we've got that shape. And then once again, I can minus it off from the main shape, but you want to make sure you make a copy of it and then select the copy and that and cut it off so you don't end up deleting this. So now we've got these two shapes here. like that, that we can use. And then we can do the same for that other piece. Everything is just shapes pretty much. And then I'm gonna drag this one out like that. And then holding Alt. I'm just using the eyedropper to select the other strokes so it doesn't be inconsistent. And so I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. And then once again, I'm going to select the oval. I'll change color. So select it, make a copy of it. And then I'm going to select this triangle and then cut off the excess there. So now we're left with this shape here. Really simple. And so you can see how the shapes are over. That's how the, this one's overlapping. And if I bring it to the bottom, it'll look like that. It depends how you want to look like. So we've got our main shapes. Here. And then what, once again, we can just add the lines to this part. Just like that. That'll be fine. And then for this, you can just use a stroke. So there's one stroke. And the key is here is to open your stroke panel. So if you get a window and stroke panel on the bottom here, click that, you'll get a stroke panel. And what I can create, you can create dashed lines if you want. And you can also round the corners. So you can see here, I'm going to round the corners like this. And I'm also going to bump that up. If you hold shift, it will go up by 10 points. And you can see that we've got a thicker line there. And then I can just copy it and then move like that, holding shift to keep it straight. And then I'm going to select this and press O for reflect and then hold op uh, option. Click in the middle line that we just made and then go preview. And we're gonna make it horizontal and it's gonna copy that same one there. And you press copy and it's just copied this same exact. So it's even. this is gonna be evenly spaced now. So I'm gonna group these three together, holding shift, select this triangle, and then once you've done that, you can see up the top here, it's gonna be on key object, and then we can center it. So click the center, and now this is centered to this triangle there, which is perfect. And now I'm just gonna go through there and remove that. Yeah, so we have our basic shapes all there. And then now we can start adding the type and adding some detail to it. So to do this typography, what we can do is actually use type itself. So if I just go and get grab a font. And 
I'm just gonna scale this up. We can actually grab this font and then we can actually mess around with it. So I'm just using sheer. I'm just going to go to object and then expand appearance or create outlines. If you get a type, you can create outlines. So now it's just a shape, as you can see there. And we can actually manipulate this by its points and do it like that way. So that's a one way you can actually do it. Or we can actually just use the pen tool and create it like that, which is which is probably easier. It's more flexible. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a new layer and we're gonna call it type. And we can probably lock the other layer. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to go through typography. So all it is is just basic. It's all just shapes, but we recognize our brain recognizes them as letters. So what we can do, I'm just gonna go through with the pen tool, press P, and then I'm just gonna go left click. And if it, it's okay if the letters are wonky because that's how we want it. You know, it's we want it rough. It's about adventure. It's about outdoors. It can it doesn't have to be perfect. So you know, I'm just holding Alt to edit the handles there, and then you can see as I'm just gonna work through each letter and just left clicking and then left clicking and dragging if I want to get nice curves. And you want to try and keep the letters consistent. So if your letters are very rounded, try and keep them rounded. If they're more focused on like sharp edges or if they've got a lot of white space, then you know, try and keep that consistent. So this might take a little bit longer, but it's more beneficial because you have more flexibility because you have the raw shape that you can go in, edit each anchor point, and it looks more hand done. And that's why it's good to sketch letters. It's fun. It's really fun sketching letters, which is hand lettering. And then for this circle, you can just use the oval tool, which sometimes I use like that. But it looks a bit, sometimes it's a bit too smooth if I did it like this. So I could just go with the pen tool and do it like this, which will create you know different sized edges, will create variety, and make it more organic. So I've got that. So we're starting to see our letters come along there. You can also go back and edit them. Holding shift if you want straight lines. You can also just copy shapes across as well. As you can see, you can see this R space has the same similar space to a P. So I can just hold Alt and Option and just drag Alt or Option, and you can actually just drag that. It will make a copy for you. So I just made a copy here. So maybe we want it like that, or maybe we want to stretch it out more. If I use the direct selection tool, you can actually move the anchor point. So we can make it like that if we want. So it saves us some time. And the cool thing is we don't always have to go towards our sketch. We can always move the letters around and change it up if it's looking too wonky. The key is to just experiment, you know, have fun with it. That's the best thing about doing, you know, logos and lettering and stuff. It's, it's so fun. So we've got our first word there. So we can actually group this word if we want by selecting it all and just going Control J or Command J. So now you can see we've got all that. And we can just leave it like that for now. And we'll do the other letters now. Now I'll just change the color as well. In order to make it really fast in switching the colors like that, the fill and the stroke, all you do is press Shift X. You can also go in the corner here and um, if you want the black and white to be back to original, you can click that on the left hand side here. Or you can click this little arrow here and it's going to switch it. But Shift X is the shortcut to switch it. So you know you can you can see all the anchor points there, the strokes, and then quickly see the space it's covering there.
That's another word done. And you can always just go back and edit it. We'll leave that for now. Uh, explore the horizon. So we've got to do this last word. You can see it was a bit tight here on the sketch, but you know, I'm just going to edit that and make sure it's more. There's more space for it to breathe. You can also edit the handles by using the direct selection tool. So the direct selection tool is the white mouse. You can actually move that like that. So you can see the letters are just getting too flopped up. And the final letter, we're going to do the N. You can curve that up. Don't be afraid to, you know, mix it up. So if there's like a the shape, you can make the letters go within the shape. It just adds a nice perspective to it. So we got the letters there, and that's it. We've got all our. You can see that we're gonna fix up those O's now too. So what we're going to do now is fix up the letters. So we're going to go through and make some changes, make some edits. So anywhere we see like inconsistencies or the spacing looks a bit off, we can edit it. So I'm going to ungroup those. Now you can play around the, the letters. It doesn't have to be perfect. And use your space within the shape. You want to try to use a lot, utilize most of the space within this balloon. But also you want to make sure that it's readable as well. And what we're going to do to get rid of some of these, to cut these holes out of these shapes, you can just select both of the shapes there. Go to the Pathfinder tool. You can go to Window and find the Pathfinder tool um, somewhere down here. Yep, you see there, click that. And what we can do is we can actually minus front. So make sure that shape that you want to cut is on the top and then you can just cut it out just like that. 
So you can see now the P has that hole there, which is awesome. Now I'll do the same for the, the O here. Just make sure the, the shape that you want on top is there. And then go to Pathfinder, go shape modes, the second one, minus front. So we minus that out. Same thing for the R. And these other shapes as well. So I'm just going through and making stuff bigger, making stuff smaller. I'm just, you know, using the selection tool. So V for the uh, normal selection and then A for the, for the direct selection. I'm selecting anchor points and just, all I'm doing is just moving them around until, you know, I feel like it's right. I'm trying to make the width of the, of each, you know, letter and bar consistent. So I'm gonna give this some breathing room. Get more space. The cool thing as well is if you double click, you can go to isolation mode and just work on that one letter and everything else is going to be blurred out, which I love doing that as well. So you can just focus on that one letter. You can also use the pen tool to add some anchor points. As you can see there, just adding more flexibility. So I can edit these letters. You can also round points off as well. Sometimes I like rounding them off. In CC, you can see you can see that um, the corners. If you select them, you'll get this little white dot, and you can see I can round that off like that. But sometimes it doesn't show up. If you're in the older version, you can just go at the top here. You can go corners. So if I go corners and then type in you know a point, it's gonna round off the corners to a certain point. As you can do that. So that's another way to do that. 
So we're gonna continue and just do this swing with this little boy character here. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool again. I'm summoning shift there. I'm gonna press I for the eyedropper and just select that stroke there. And then once again, we can just build off our rough you know, drawing and sketch there. Doesn't be perfect, but get a nice perspective there. <laughs> so we have our swing, and we'll connect that afterwards. And I might just delete. Oh, actually, I'll just leave that for now. And then what I want to do is just gonna go through the pen tool again and just start doing all these pieces. We're gonna do his hat. Remember, everything's just in shapes. Use the lips tool here for this. <coughs> I'm just gonna. Make the stroke smaller. And I'm gonna use the shape builder tool just to cut off. Um, just to connect those actually. The eyebrows you can just use the shape as well. And the cool thing with this is if you go to, you can use the width tool. So the width tool allows you to um, edit the strokes to make it more wider. So if I do shift, shift to W, I can actually just left click and drag on the stroke. And it's gonna increase that like that. You can also taper off the ends as well. So you can taper that off like that as well, which is pretty cool. So with this one, I might just do I'll taper off the end like that, and I'll copy this across the front. Mm -hmm. That's just love. So I usually do the eyes, cut a piece like that. And we'll go through the body here. You want to make sure you keep the proportions decently. You do everything in pieces to make it more smoother. That's just so you know, we'll do the whole upper torso. Separately. And you keep on thinking that's just love. That's just love. And then we can do just simple hands. That's just love. I'll probably get rid of change the color there. <laughs> Just 
Shift and option to copy that across. Just go like that. I'm gonna make sure this body is in the front above the swing. And then what I'll do with the thing is. I'll use M and that will create the rectangle tool. Rectangle tool is also found on the left here. And what I'll do, I'll get the direct selection tool and select the sides and actually get the rounded tips and drag that in. <coughs> and then just copy that down. Now what you can do is just select it and then drag some of those in to create variety. You can just put that like that. And then I'll just minus that bit off. And just make it a bit bigger. And we'll add another finger as well. And then we can always go ahead and go add some shading. So if I just get a rectangle tool again and just then changes to multiply, just make sure it's the same length as the finger is. Then we'll go ahead, select it all, use the shape builder tool, and minus the excess off. sure that it, this goes over there. I'm gonna drop the opacity down. That's gonna look a bit weird. Because the light, if the light's hitting this way, then the shadow will come differently. That's one way to do it. You can just make this Change the skin color. We'll use like a lighter shade as well. If you don't want to use the shading. That's just love. That's one way to do it. That's just love. Just go delete this. And we'll leave that for now. That's just love. That's just love. I'll round that off too. Go to my transform and I'm gonna flip, flip horizontal. In your transform panel, if you click the just drop down menu, you can actually go to horizontal, which will save you some time. And what it does, it just flips the object or group or shape that you selected. Slowly just editing that stuff. Make sure it's all together, grouped. And we'll do the pants now.
Once again, we're going to use a rectangle for the shoe. And I'll just make this a different tone. His legs look back, so make sure you want to fix that up. I'll just double click, go into isolation mode, and I'm just going to go through. Hopefully, it looks like he's sitting there. And I'll get the shape of the tool and just mend up this shape, this shape here. So this is just one shape. And then I'll change the colors of these. Cool, so we've got that. Now we're gonna edit the colors and we're gonna fix it up. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn off the sketch layer. So go to my layers panel, turn that off. Now I'm just gonna focus on this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the background up. I'll just use a simple color. Um, what I'm gonna do is Make a new layer, call it background layer. So drag beneath it and I'm gonna do a, I'm just gonna change this to CMYK for a second. Just a cream off white would do. So we got the trace, then we got the typography, but we want to put this on this layer as well. Cool. And we'll just lock the background layer using the lock there. So what I'm going to do, I'll turn the type off and just focus on the balloon. So I'm going to select these parts and go shift X. Then um, go through these shapes here. And... We'll, we'll just pick a color using what we have. So I'll use these, these bluish tones. And then as I go through these, what I'm going to do is use the same color and I'm going to use multiply. So if you've got a transparency panel, usually I'll play around with multiply or either color dodge or overlay to get a nice desired effect just to create that shading. And I'll just lock shapes um, that I want in the back for now. Once again I'll go blue and then maybe this one can be screen for a lighter colour. And then for these strokes again multiply again. And just drop the opacity as well. What you can do if you just drag this out. I can select these lines and go to object at the top left corner and go to expand and turn them into a shape. So you can see now these are shapes. And what you can do now is you just select all of that, select the, sh the other shape as well, just unlock that, the other one. 
select it again, select these, shift M and then hold option or alt to minus that off, just like that. And for this one you can just select this all together. So now I plus all these together and I'm going to go to screen. Make sure that's ungrouped. And I'm just going to make sure that to multiply the other ones and this is on screen so you can see now the shape is there directly on that line so we have that and now we're adding slow slowly slowly details making it look nice and we'll do the same for these over here and we'll probably use a Cool way to find some colors is if you just select the color you want go to color guide if you don't know how to open that you can actually go to window color guide and we're going to go to left complement up the top here you see and the complementary color is the opposite opposite colors pretty much so blue is a cool color and red and orange is like a warm color so if i go to left complement you can see we get these reds up now and what i'll do is press this plus with these little three columns there click that and if I go to my swatches panel, you'll see the colors just got added. So what I can actually do now is just use this nice red color. Like that. I can also make this red as well. If I want to focus on that. But I can just leave that for now. And I'll most likely change these strokes as well. So I'll multiply. So you can see there you got some nice contrast going with these fins. And what I can do as well, if I select this, go to object, path, offset path, I'm going to make the balloon offset and then I can add a nice shadow on these fins in the, on the, at the end of the ship. And you can just set the joints around and press OK, maybe we'll drop it a bit less. 8 points is alright. I'm going to hit multiply and I'll just bring it up a bit so you can see now we've made this offset path we can actually overlap it on these wings so we'll just select um, these two and then I'm going to select that excess that we just made that shape and minus that off so now you can see I just got these sh these shadows here and, I and this one will be up the front I'll change this. I'll probably drop the shadow and we'll make it a red. So that's looking cool. And then I'm going to fix these strokes up. We'll turn it in, expand it again. So we go object, expand. And then select that line and the shape. Let's create that line. Cool. So we have that shadow there. It looks like that's um, these are under. You can also probably do a, a, a darker tone. Not too dark. We just want to go a little bit darker. Yeah, thirty percent. So you can see if you go to your color panel and if you, you can switch it from RGB, CMYK or HSB um, but what it, it won't switch your mode, your color mode of the document but it will just switch the parameters where you can actually move the sliders up and change the color. So you can, K is for black so I'll just up that black a bit to make it a more darker tone than this red here. So it just looks like it's more in the behind the background that this is, you know, casting a shadow on those wings there. And we'll pretend that the light is coming from the top. And then we'll go fix these. We'll expand these ones as well. We just want to drag that off. So then we can just cut off the excess bit. Select them all. Go to object, expand. 
I'm gonna select the fin and then once again shift M and hold alt to minus off the excess there and then we can actually get rid of these sticky bits if you want if you want it like that I kind of like it like that I can either keep it the same color or I'll well, keep it like that. So cool. And then we have it. We've done our wing. We've done our main color for that. And then we've pretty much colored this guy. We just might add some more shading. So we'll just make this ropes the same color as this. So what I'll do, I'll just double click on the isolation mode and then use the pen tool and just imagine where the shadow would be. I'll drop the opacity like 40%. Just pretend the light is coming from the top. Minus that off, multiply, and then drop that to 40%. And make sure you're using the same color as the fill color is there. So the shadows actually look decent. This is the, a nice way to add shading. The reason why you go into isolation mode is that you can isolate that one shape so you can actually just focus and instead of worrying about everything else around it and then we've got to add some shading on this as well you can see it's not looking really 3d um, what we can do to fix this is that I'll get the pen tool and I'll you know use smart guides as well smart guides is Go to view and smart guides and you can see the purple lines which are guides will help me so you can see as i'm clicking you can see the the lines are helping me there the guides and if something looks off with your eye you can just you know edit it so then i'm just going to select this shape and then go back to my color panel and then just make it a darker tone and bring it to the back so it looks like it's it's a three it's a wooden plank. And then we can just add a bit of shading here. So it looks like he's sitting on it. I'll copy the pants so we can just get rid of that excess bit. And we'll select the wood bit and the shape we just made to get rid of that. Make sure you select all the shapes so it keeps it there. We'll go multiply and then maybe 70%. So you're just making all these cutaway shapes. This should probably be like this. I'll just leave it. Even some shading here. I'll just gonna make a copy of this the head just to make some shading under that under the neck and then bring it to if you press control shift and then left square bracket it brings it lower I'm just gonna make sure this 
So you can go object ar trans uh, arrange and bring center back or send backward. You can see the shortcut keys here. That's what I use, you know, to bring things in front or back. So this is how we're just creating shading. I'm just going to outline around there. Is that okay, that looks cool. Sweet, so now we're going to focus on um, fixing up the type, changing the color. So we've got our balloon here, and now we can just work on the type. I'm just going to select the type and, you know, just group the ones that I want. So I'll group all these letters here. And it depends what look you want to go for. If we just want it simple, we can just, you know, keep it like white. Or, you know, you can play around with some color. So just adding simple color, it just makes it really nice. And then if I play around with the background, maybe if we put on a darker background. See what it looks like. So to roughen up the type a little bit, if we want it more rough, what I'll do, I'll select it, go to effect, and we're gonna go to distort and transform and go to roughen. I'm gonna go to preview, and you can see here that we don't want it to do it too much, so what I would suggest is do 0 0.1 and maybe 0 0.2. Um, the detail. And we're going to make it smooth. So you can see it doesn't look as well. If we change that. It's looking too rough. It looks ugly. So the thing is with this, I'll show you a better way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, um, we're going to make it black. Go to effect, pixelate mezzotint, and we'll go to maybe medium dots. Click OK. What we're going to do is go object, rasterize, then just press OK, and then go to image trace. So what we're going to do with this, is we're going to ignore white and we're going to play around with the threshold and you could and you can see now it's starting to add some roughness and some you know um, dots and some grain and some dust you can also increase the noise as well that should make it more grainy more like concrete if you want but if you want less of the scrappy stuff and the grunge you just put the noise up because we really just want a bit of the rough edges. So you can see if you play around with the threshold, if you increase it, it's going to not have much effect. But if you drop the threshold low, it's going to make it really more rough. So we want to have a balance. We don't want to make it too rough. We just want to have like a bit of a, you know, jagged edges, a bit of a variety. And maybe you can play around the paths there, drop the corners a bit, make it more rounder, drop the noise down. And sometimes it takes a little bit to buffer. But you just play around with it to get something that's nice. So you can see there, it's pretty subtle and I like that. So what I want to do, press expand at the top corner here. And then from that, you can see the difference now. If we zoom in, the edges are rough and it adds like a nice effect. We can go along and do it 
for these ones as well. So I'll just go black, same effect, just go effect, pixelate, mezzotint, medium dots, even you can go grainy dots as well. Object, rasterize, because we've got to turn it into a vector. And then image trace. And I think the settings, make similar settings. Make sure you always tick ignore white. If sometimes it might lag if you're if it's a lot of anchor points. You can see here anchor points to is two <coughs> is two thousand. Um, you can turn preview off and then move the anchor, uh, move the parameters, the sliders, and then and then it will load for you. So that's just a tip as well. But because it's just simple shapes, it's, there's not too much texture to worry about. Okay, that's fine. Then I'll uh, expand. Once again, so if you zoom in there, you can see that nice grainy detail. It's better than doing rough and, and I prefer it. I'm just ungroup those to group these again. I might just change it. It's too bright. Screen, or I reckon. Multiply. That's cool. That's really... We'll go with multiply there. So cool. There you have it. That's how you edit with the type. If you want to add some more effects as well, you can add a gradient. Just kind of cool. So maybe I don't want just flat what fill colors. I can actually add a gradient. You can see how the gradient is applying into each letter. I don't want that. I'm just going to go to control eight and that's going to turn it into a compound path and recognize it as one shape. So I'm going to go to my gradient pa panel. You can go window gradient to open that. Then change the angle to 90 degrees. And then I'm going to click this button here on the right. Flip that. And then maybe we want to add a bit of the blue there. So if you want it to like fade out, Maybe you want like a lighter color. You know, you can play around, get some different looks if you want. If you want to do that sort of effect, but I prefer to just have like nice fill colors. And then what I'm going to do is add a bit of texture on top as well. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to locate my texture pack. So just tips, um, and then we'll pick one of them. Change the color. This is a high resolution tip, and then I can play around with the blending modes once again. But obviously, it's a bit too much, so we'll drop the opacity to maybe 30%. To add some roughness, I think overlay looks nice. See, there's adding a bit of the detail, a bit of the texture. You can see the difference without it. So that adds a bit of a grunge for the piece. And then I'll make a clipping mask. So you just make a rectangle, select these two objects. Make sure that this shape is on top. So hold shift and select both objects and go object, clipping mask, make. So we have that clipping mask and you can see the difference now with the texture. So I'm going to show you now how to put it on an image. Maybe you want an adventure background or you want to put it on a nice backdrop. Um, you can do that. So what I'm going to usually do, I'm just going to leave the background for now. I'm just going to make sure it's like that. So what I'm going to show you now is how to put this adventure logo onto a nice background. So sometimes you want to backdrop or you want to make it you know, look adventurous or cool or you want to put it on Instagram. You can do it this way to have it have a nice effect. So what I want to do is I'm going to select all these shapes. We're going to select our typography, go to object and go to compound path and make. This will allow us to create one path and make it one shape. And what we're going to do now is we're going to select this, select the background shape, go to our pathfinder. So window pathfinder, if you don't know how to open that. And the second shape mode is minus front. This will minus the shapes on this shape. So it's gonna minus our typography on this shape now, which is pretty sweet. And then because we've done that, we wanna make sure that 
you can see the other parts of it. So just I'm gonna drag it down to the layer and then bring it to the back there. So we can still see this bit. So I'm actually going to minus these parts off using the shape builder tool. Just like that. And we can actually minus this off as well. So we can have the balloon like that if we want. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these parts. I'm going to make this one shape. So we're going to make all that the same color so it all connects together. And then... For our guy here, I don't know what happened to his shirt, it disappeared. So I'm just going to copy... This over here. Just like that. And then we can probably... Actually, I might delete this guy. Because if we just want the logo to be... I just want the logo to be flat and simple. And I might make that smaller. So cool, we've got our main shape there. So if I just group all that and change to white, we want to make sure that the, all these, any strokes is actually expanded. So we go to object and we go to expand, go OK. And sometimes you can just select it all and go object, expand appearance or expand. So it should expand everything. So once we have all that, you can group it. A better way to do it is actually go to your Pathfinder and click Unite. So once you press that, you can see it's just united all the shapes together as one big shape. I'm going to copy it over my picture here and I'm going to bring it up because the picture is on the top layer. So I'll just drag it in the, below the, that layer. And then there we have it. So we've got our white there, we can change it to a black, blue if you want. Um, I'll get another picture. Get a bit more contrast. And there we have our logo, adventure logo. Just like that.